see you soon. <laughs> As a channel member, uh, we want to have stuff for you guys. What we plan to do, of course, have those emojis, a font emoji. Yeah, yeah. We want to do comic strips for oh. you guys to kind of uh, keep our characters and comics out there keep the creative blood flowing and just the little strips maybe monthly the bell for notifications sub if you haven't uh we're trying to make the, the best content we can out here and do something more like a podcast let's get out of here i've had enough of this Ooh, what a rush few different times just to kind of get a real deep color and then kind of go in here at the bottom. ton of questions for you, so I just want to ask you, what do you think of this turnout? Yeah, yeah. Fuck the Diaz brothers, yeah? Fuck those cockroaches! It's Friday night, you know what time it is. Time for the Diaz brothers show. Phil and Brandon are back. Turn up the volume. Let us know if you can hear us. And tonight we're talking to RJ from Critical Blast. Talking once again about that amazing book, Perfect Ten. The hardcover's coming out. Put your hands together for the Diaz Brothers. What is up? Oh my God! What? What? What is going on here? I got to tell you, when the train is pushing right before the street, the effects. Well. Let's just say they worked. What's going on? Hey, what? Can there you guys you. see me? There are you. What is going on the with this com camera? Probably not even on. No, why isn't the camera on? This there's is horrible. No way to tell. Can you guys hear us? Best show ever. People are saying already. We're topping it, guys. You thought we uh, couldn't get any better, and we are. Let's see. What if we do this? <laughs> There's the screen, though. The screen's coming down. What if I uh, switch cameras? Wait. See, this is a problem. I can't see any of That's this stuff. You, this is not popped out. You, you popped this window out. I don't know why. Is it supposed to be oh, a Oh, look at this. Hey, there it all is. 
All right. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Let's see here. We got some uh, something you guys could watch here. Uh, here we go. Twelve? You couldn't be more than five. You're so fat, they have to jack you up to take off your shoes. Yeah, well, you're so skinny, your eyes are in single file. Well, you're so ugly, your ears stick out to get away from your face. Well, your mama is Hold so... Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't bring anyone mother into this. She ain't here. If it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. So remember, when you put down one mother, you put down mothers all over the world. And we're back. We're a little high there. Yeah, well, That's all we got. The people want to see. They want to see there. the amazing Dale Keown cover for CG Vacation, inked by Shelby Robertson. We're back. We fixed it. And uh, you look kind of short there, Brandon. It's because I'm hunched over. Just like Wolverine? Well. The weight of living in a society is finally getting. <laughs> is it? Yeah, you seem kind of down today, Bren. Is everything okay? That's why I'm all the way down here. What's your shirt say today? It says discipline equals freedom, but you can't see it on stream. I have to go reposition. Discipline equals freedom. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for being here. It is Friday. We're starting out the weekend. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Well, uh, yeah, could be a little higher. Yeah, everybody wants to see your knees or what? That's fine. There you go. Starting off the week right with, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a Diaz Brothers show without a rocky start. You know, it's striving against adversity. That's what we're all about. And discipline equals freedom. Now you can see Brandon's t-shirt. What's up, everybody in the chat? We got Shani here. Good to see you. What's up? Uh, SDA is here. I hear there's a Bogan um, amongst us. Michael Bancroft, Gordon Goodbrother is here. Abra. Abra's two What's cents. Up? Good to see you. Uh, Chim Chim, our good boy Chim Chim. You could uh, you could see him sometimes on Mondays on the hard line. Jay Ryan is here. Snarky. Uh, scrolling up. Alistair, great to see you, Alistair. What's up? Uh, Shanny with the five gifted memberships. Thank you so much, Shanny. Uh, you are the duck. Good to have you in the chats. And let's get some ducks in the chat for uh, for Shani. You are the duck. Yeah, you know how like people say you're the goat. Oh, I see. And she's the duck. I don't really know what duck stands yeah, for as an acronym. Acronym. But thank you so much for the uh, the memberships. And I got. I think we have a duck. Duck, 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 yeah. Leaving me, I kind of wanted another episode of X-Men this week. Yeah. Are you talking about it right now? Not right now. We'll get to it. Okay. And then later also we're bringing RJ on, like we said, to talk about uh, Perfect 10, which he's now publishing Perfect 10, Critical Blast. Oh, really? So he's publishing it? Yeah. He is a big publisher down there. Wait, and, where does down there mean? Uh, I mean, lower in the States than us, I think. I see. I could just assume. Let's see who else is in here. Scrolling up. Uh, Hyper Wizard is here. Good to see you. He drank two bottles of wine last night. Now he has the gout. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yes. It's the sugar. What's up, Kirby? Wine. Good to see you as well. Uh, let's see. What, what are these? Did we miss these? Are there... Yeah, More? she was trying to snipe Chimera with a gifted Zade Comics membership. One gifted membership. Jesus! And another gifted membership. Jesus! Shani did not score high in sniper school. Why not? Clearly. I don't know what that means. Mark. Well, she, <clears throat> she did the shotgun spray of five, and we appreciate that. Sark is here. Good to see you, Sark. 
Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe, hit the like. Uh, we have 53 people watching right now. We're live on X, on YouTube, and on Rumble, which we have uh, two people watching on Rumble, which I appreciate that. Ooh. All you people over on the, the Rumble verse. You remember that one time we got a so called super chat on Rumble? Yeah. And then it's not transferable right because it didn't reach a certain amount yeah i think you need to have like a hundred dollars in rumble rants yeah. to actually start accepting the money so that's there it's locked up in limbo right now yeah. so if anybody not wants collecting interest imagine <laughs> if we were collecting interest on that'd be amazing compounded monthly even <clears throat> quarterly look at this bragging bancroft in the chat finally. bragging bancroft finally yeah. paid me Tooting yes. your own horn down That's there. It's not even real money in Australia. Look at this. $377. This guy just rubbing it in. Let me tell you, we got a state tax return. Oh, Zade Comics. We did. A dollar twenty-two. One dollar twenty-two cents. That's our tax return yep, for Zade Comics. We got the check mailed directly to the house. Yep. And this is the first time I'm owing taxes mm -hmm. ever in my life. Yeah, he'll do that to you. Yeah. Th thanks, uh, Uncle Sam. Let's see. Shani says, you just got to get people who don't read contracts to sign the contract and get interest rates paid to you for life. Yeah, that's how you do it. It sounds like a Fed, if I ever heard one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, welcome to the show, guys. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, first, I guess, updates on the Lost Pages stuff. If you guys seen our previous shows this week, uh, they everything is at the printer, all the main books. So we have the proof, which we showed off. There's proof behind you, Bren, if you want to grab it. I see it. You got those glasses. Uh, proofs are in. And if you guys heard, you've seen our other shows, I talked about how we added one page to the book. And uh, we added, updated the pageantry, put the barcode on the back, simplified the little uh, synopsis on the back cover as well. And these are all in production. Some of them as well, we're getting 25 signed by Simon Bisley. Those are getting printed in the UK like we did with the first book, which is freaking awesome. They're sending it over to him. He's signing them. They're collecting it, sending it over to us. So shout out to, for, shout out mm -hmm. to Mixum for doing that. Freaking amazing. And in two weeks' time, we should have these bad boys start shipping them out. Going to be awesome. And uh, as well as, of course, we have the tomes that are ready to roll out. The trading cards, which we haven't shown in a while. The animated series trading card for Krim. We got the foil, shiny... Uh, crossover trading card with Tiger Blue and Reaper Destroyer. Shout out to those boys. Um, logos on the back. And we are getting, probably next week, we'll get the, the Roka Ford playing cards printed along with the bookmarks everybody's going to be getting. So there's a lot of goodies on this. If you guys haven't backed, make sure you get your, uh, your backing in soon and update all of your addresses. So we don't have to double ship stuff. So that's going to be awesome. Also, another thing we showed off, uh, I showed off a little bit last night on the creative block here. Could pull this up. The People Ashcan 2 is, look at, look at that widescreen, is completed with full, full tones by Dan Dahl. Amazing inks. You're giving away the whole story. No, this is the first page. Well, this is, uh, you know, there's some booty here. Mm, Ascast. Ascast. Dan couldn't resist himself. Now, I, I didn't write this in the script, but he had to have uh, some he didn't babes do in here. A, the Heat esque. He's got a great ass. He does have a great ass. This is side character script. Sally. Who, in my head canon, and I, I'd like to explore more of Sally's backstory, mm -hmm. uh, but she's the stenographer in the courtroom. Yeah. He's the uh, courtroom sketch artist. They got right. playful banter, you know, throughout the series. But yeah. So she got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. Look at that. Yeah. This is not unlike the courtroom stenographer that I was making laugh during my jury duty. 
Really? When I was, there. I don't remember. I mean, she wasn't. I don't know if she had a nice butt like this, but she was, um, yeah, one of the young, new age stenographers. Dude, that was years ago. That was so long ago. Uh, her name's not Booty McMellons, <laughs> but maybe that's her stage name. Also, there mm -hmm. are there is a stripper scene in the book too, because uh, there's a club scene later on. Actually, one of the last pages. So there's more. There's more babes in it. So grab that as well. That is going to be going to print, you know, probably next week when the the, the reprints come out for uh, people issue one. If you haven't read that, definitely do so. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun if you love vigilante storytelling jury stuff like that. Duty. Yeah, I actually went to jury duty and I made like four hundred seventy five dollars, and I was they pay uh, you to go alternate. Yeah, I didn't know they paid you to get called. Uh, they pay you well, at least over here they pay you um yeah it was i had to go to it right and then it was literally <laughs> the 11th hour we're all lined up to leave yeah and then they're like and it was like nine o'clock at night or something like just before they were gonna let us to go and we're all lined up at the door ready to go and then they're like hey we need all these people to come up to this thing and then they did jury like the pooling or whatever and then i got pulled as an alternate and then i had to go for four days and uh that means you don't even have so to rein in funny. right for the decision right right but you have to sit there through the whole uh -huh. procedure or whatever procedure. it's cool you get paid though uh yeah yeah it was i don't know at least a hundred dollars a day i guess because i was only there for like four days and then uh it was so funny the whole thing because the guy was defending himself he was crazy and oh my god dude and the judge was like uh you cannot come in i won't hold you in contempt if you don't show up yeah and i'm like no no it's totally fine she's like you you must have like class or something <laughs> to go to because mm -hmm. the whole thing was so ridiculous the guy was defending himself on the first day no joke we we were like going through the proceedings did the jury pooling and then they were going to start up and then or maybe it was the second like after that one because it was so late then we went for the next day all showed up for the next day and then it was delayed and then like after maybe an hour hour and a half or something like that like the bailiff came in and was like oh, and then so what happened was the guy literally shit his pants in the wheelchair like he had to go out to use the bathroom and then they had to cancel. The so the, the guy defending himself yeah. was in a wheelchair. He was in a wheelchair, and everybody and then he had to call like a recess because so he we aced his pants. <laughs> yeah, and then so <laughs> we had to come back two or three more. Are days. you gonna get arrested for talking about this? I mean, it's over. Yeah, it was like fifteen years ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Very poignant, indeed. <laughs> No, the the I wish I remembered the entire thing because I used to have it all down so good. Yeah, how crazy this dude was, and I don't remember all of the intricacies. Well, didn't he like attack like his relative? I remember or something? that, but like that's not the funny part. The funny part was him defending himself and how ridiculously stupid the guy was, and he was like, you know talking to like the officers and stuff and then he'd look over at the jury and be like does anybody live in downers grove and then like and they'd be like you can't ask, <laughs> you can't the, ask jury the jury things. questions <laughs> and then he'd be like are they doing construction on your street because they have my street tore up <laughs> and i'm pretty sure it's a thing about the demographics of the neighborhood and it's like you can't talk to the jury <laughs> yeah it was uh quite hilarious i remember when you were going through that yeah it was a obviously it was a criminal thing jay ryan doesn't know the term aced his pants he aced his pants that must be an american thing he's a he's canadian is he yeah i know it's disappointing yeah, he's canadian no idea i know so uh all that stuff is in motion we I, we're getting ready for all that so yes i can't wait for out of his way Gordon Griller says, what's your home address? <laughs> he would literally, while he was doing the jury, uh, like picking the jury, because he was defending himself. So he got to ask the jury questions beforehand. And he was like, 
Um, juror number three, how do you feel about interracial relationships? <laughs> and they're like, you can't, it has nothing to do with anything. You can't ask that. The like the state prosecutor <laughs> or whoever was prosecuting the guy was like, he can't ask questions like that. <laughs> That's that why it was so funny. funny. There was so much dumb stuff like that. I had to stay and watch it all. And so I'm sure somewhere on the courtroom recordings, there's me going <laughs> <laughs> and pretending that I'm coughing, covering my laughter. Uh, I'm just getting some stuff in, what are they called? Uh, organized here for the show. <laughs> yeah. Lots of news. The key is to tell them that you're prejudiced against all races. <laughs> all right. This is, uh, we're getting into a little bit of ASCAS. There's some ass talk. We're going to get into X Men as well because um, there was some, uh, I'd say some ass in the newest X Men episode. So we have, uh, of course, the ass intro. And after it's all said and done, you're going to be taking splinters out of your fat asses all night long because you got some fat asses. The only chance you have, you have no chance, but you had a chance, is that you can run Nicky Split. You can't run because you got the bad asses. After his son done, we're gonna have a tailgate party for all my freaks out there in Atlanta, Georgia. Barely moving. <laughs> that was great. Awesome. Scott and Rick Steiner. Uh, Shouts to them. All right, we're talking about ads now, Brandon. We've seen the evolution of thought streamers, right, dude? Twitch. Back in the back in my day, before Twitch was a thing, Justin TV. It was called Justin T dot TV. Justin dot TV. Justin dot TV. And now apparently they still own Twitch, technically. Mm -hmm. So that's why they can't make it a dot com or really change anything about it, I heard. Like Justin TV is still like maybe licensing it to them. I don't know, it was some weird, but I digress. Uh, but back then, it was all about li uh, life, life streaming. Yeah, life casting. Right? Life casting. Before video game streaming blew up, it would just be a, some guy or some chick with a webcam in the corner of their room, like Big Brother, just going and doing yoga right. or cooking or whatever the hell they were doing. Right. And you could, you know, people would chat. And uh, that's like when I, I was in junior high or high school. It was uh, Justin TV. Then it switched over to Twitch. Video games streaming took off. And then... Well, I think they started doing that on Justin, and then it became so popular, they made Twitch to kind of just... Rebrand. Categorize that, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, th then that, you know, esports took off. All these video game uh, streamers took off. And then they had the, the demonetization thing. And then now people have moved over to YouTube and all that. But... Still strong was the thought streamers, female streamers, sometimes not even playing the video game that is being uh, put on the stream. Maybe someone Shown. else is playing or it's a recording. Lots of uh, uh, female streamers being exposed that way over the years. And then I'd say probably like 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less, the hot tub streamer blew right, up. Right. You were selling the water, the bathtub yeah. water and bath everything. Yeah, bathtub water, hot tub streamer. This was a, a big controversy. Uh, Twitch had to address it and try to cut back on uh, having that and uh, I think banning hot tub streams. Right, I, I remember that. And they had a workaround where you could have like an inflatable pool full of balloons. You technically were not in a hot tub. Right. Yeah, I, I remember all these workarounds. Yeah. I never watched any of it. Yeah, there was uh, so Twitch has like categories, mm -hmm. you know, gaming or art stream, or uh, the, the popular body one painters, is painters, the <laughs> gigantic <laughs> breast and body painters. I mean, there, there's an art to that. Yeah, I appreciate the body They're painters. Skilled, pretty They're cool. Skilled. Um, and then they'd have the just talking category. It's like, why would anyone Dude, just want imagine <laughs> to watch the rhymes? Oh, that'd there, be cool. Just talking, talking really fast. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty tight. Uh, shout outs to Busta. But now, workaround. So they've, I guess they've uh, locked down and gotten strict on their policies of like sexual content and stuff on Are Twitch. You sure, I don't know because this is the new workaround for these. 
these chicks and very uh, uh pertinent oh, to the ass cast snarticon wants to point out his favorite category mike licking asmr <laughs> i remember that yeah that's <laughs> these asmr streamers but this takes it to a whole nother level now this chick is playing twitch but <laughs> yeah. uh very or just they, full playing they've Fortnite. Changed their policies press x to doubt <laughs> look at that rusty this is funny and this, this I, what's is... so funny about this especially here is that the shadowing going on between your butt cheeks is creating an area in which the green screen isn't being keyed out right see i didn't actually watch this i thought it was just a picture this is actually live footage yes. of her at a standing desk yes uh projected on now i mean this is just why would you just do like uh um, 40 chess hair here like green body paint full green body paint mm -hmm. and then just key yourself out here like this and the shadowing would do all of the work this is just genius yeah she is fourth dimensional streaming 40 here. chess right there right see there. i respect it oh uh, God, bancroft, uh bancroft time out bancroft someone for 10 seconds please or i'll do it disgusting <sighs> These Australians. Do you ever see it if people <laughs> fart? <laughs> uh, that's the worst. Um, the world is doomed. I don't. I respect this. Uh, Hyper Wizard, man about town. There's a VTuber that screen screened the gameplay into her boobs. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Sumo Thori deleted Bancroft's message. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sumo. <laughs> Ask Australians. Yeah. So that's, uh, I thought this was very pertinent uh, for the, the stream you here. You don't have the other one, do you? No, Did I didn't. send you the other one? I don't think so. It was just, it was just cam girling. It wasn't even, yeah. it was on Twitch. Yeah. It's that girl that was doing, she's just naked, but like putting the camera and her like just the nipples are just oh, out of frame. I think I she's also that. long boob, you know? Uh huh. And uh, so there's a lot of chest going on there. But yeah, she's like the camera angle. Was like that a camera on the floor? And she's like <laughs> squatting on the floor. It's out of control, dude. Yo. Because it's like there's pages for that, right? And then there's Twitch. Right. I wonder what page, like who's making more money? Because well, like, I don't know. there's the lie, right? You're lying to yourself. You're watching Twitch and you're watching this chick mm -hmm. in a thong, squatting on the floor, playing this playing this video game, and you're lying to yourself. Or you're a degenerate pervert, not lying to yourself, true to heart, watching yeah. a real cam girl stream. Which one of those girls is making more money? Well, may maybe they're doing it on Twitch because they get a better percentage for you know tips or whatever they get through twitch right, right. and then uh, where where the where's the viewership are there higher viewership on i'm sure there's higher viewership on twitch because all the liars that are trying to lie to themselves <laughs> but are they paying out in per capita higher than the dirty degenerates since so ronan please tell me phil is uh not going to stream the next hard line on his ass <laughs> don't tempt me that would be a good idea. <laughs> could do that for the creative block. I feel like yeah, we could make it. the category unique streaming methods. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Yeah. Oh, we got Pablo Romero in the chat. Good to see you. This is larger viewership on Twitch for sure. Um, the real right. yeah, that's cam think. girls handler probably makes the most money. Oh, he's saying like a uh, Andrew, Tate Andrew Tate situation. Sure. Yeah, like a studio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the real winner here. Uh, all right, let's see what else we got yeah, here. The internet this evolution is, is very, very exhausting sometimes. Like, you know, like the YouTube evolution, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like it started off a certain way and it was kind of like uh, clips that you would put together of like animes or TV shows with the music videos. And that was get a ton of views and stuff. So, like, using other people's content. And then it evolved into like you trying to make your own goofy content, like skits and stuff. And then now, you know, the big thing is just like reviewing and like trash talking other people's yeah, outrage culture and stuff, and stuff like, that. like that. Sure. And 
it's like yeah it's and just... it's interesting to see like the evolution of like the thumbnails people use as well like there some used to be really basic now there's all this ai Dude, stuff the ai stuff is outrageous because obviously we're in the art scene right mm -hmm. and so like we know the technologies and stuff and i would imagine that there's lay men out there that don't necessarily know about that but like i'm watching coast to coast am and they're using ai generated images for their thumbnails right and there's nothing to watch and i'm listening to it yeah but the thumbnails and the people in the comments are like whoa you, your thumbnails are getting so amazing they're so gorgeous now. <laughs> yeah how are you doing you know i'm really loving these well, that's probably things. all the boomers that and are watching this stuff it's like yeah maybe maybe and i've seen some other channels where the comments are the same thing and the channel never comes out and says that they're using ai generated art they're always like oh thanks you know i'm really <laughs> right. trying to upgrade the page or something like that yeah everybody's doing it the other thing is like uh the face where it's like you have your, your youtuber who is you know the the talking head of, of the channel and then they'll do a selfie of themselves making an expression and then it's always like their yeah. face with whatever expression they're going to have to, su to suck you in. No, I block those channels. <laughs> I don't watch the video and I put don't recommend me this channel. Gordon Goodbrother, outraged at our use of the term boomer. What's up, Edwin's in the chat. Good to see you. Thanks for being here, brother. Uh, all right. More ass. Oh, the bean pad is also here. Let's see more Salma, less red curtains. Do you think we should do three more Salmas behind me? Yeah, we could do um, different films. Yeah, we'll have to do videos. a poll to see which films the people want to see her from. <laughs> um, all right, our boy uh, Fatal, well, my boy Fatal J, put this tweet out, and you also, I saw this. You also sent it to me, which was this was great. And I don't know if if he came up with this or he's reposting this, but hilarious, Rogue. With that butt. Yeah. We got Captain Marvel. Right. Sorry, Fam Ms. Marvel. Famously. Famously wrote, got her powers. Right. Got her powers from Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel, right? Absorbs her powers, right? And now all of a sudden, she's got flat ass. Yeah. Look at that. Culpable Brie Larson. Yeah, it's all Brie Larson's fault. So thanks, Brie Larson. Thanks, uh, Ms. Marvel, for this. That's what we have to put up with. Bringing us to talking about X Men. Um, here's a palette cleanser. Brand found this. Is this pixel art? Sexy pixel well, art. Technically, anything on the internet is pixel art. <sighs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but before we get into it, Reese, Reese, my brother, five gifted memberships from Reese. Thank you so much. The Beam Pad got one. Jordan Hurst, Angry Viking veteran, Oz Head. Jesus and uh, Lieutenant Hughes, thank you, Reese, for those memberships. Really appreciate. It. Now you guys that all have those memberships can use the uh, beautiful emojis in the chat, whether it be the bonk, the hey yo, uh, the well, this is my favorite, the swiggity swooty. That's perfect <laughs> for ass cast right now. Uh, throwing up that peach emoji. Thank you so much, uh, Reese. Swiggity swooty. Give me that booty. That's right. So this week's episode <clears throat> of Janie's caning. Oh, she's using the canes. I hope she's Janie's caning Miss Marvel. Yeah, it's probably that flat ass. Marvel, yeah, for sure. But this week's X Men episode, Brandon. Mm -hmm. Um, I recall we watched it. Mm -hmm. Rogue was in it a little bit. She was. She had like one line. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Well, there was some contention about Rogue in this episode. Okay, you know. With the man, the whole Magneto thing. Yes, I yeah. accidentally X out of this thing. Well, yeah, the whole uh, Magneto thing. So uh, they introduced Mister Sinister, Sinister. Yes, which is pretty true. cool. Um, and that was topical because we had uh, the news that he might be in the new MCU uh, movies. Uh, if you guys don't know Mister Sinister, here's some badass freaking Mark Silvestri art. I always thought Mr. Sinister's design was cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I don't know 
anything about Mr. Sinister <laughs> at all. But his design is fucking badass, dude. Like those crazy cape thing he's got going yeah, on. Yeah, really cool. We hate, used to have that action figure. I mean, he probably still the action figure of him with a little light thing in his chest. So he had a light switch on his back. Yeah. Um, and then he had the stone in his chest that would light up. Yeah, he's super cool looking. Don't know anything about him. So he's like a geneticist, right? And he's he's really, really old. Well, from this episode, what they say is that he is from like the 1800s and yep. he kidnap mutants and steal their DNA to make himself more powerful. Right. So they said in this episode of the X. And that's from the comics. Okay. So and this whole inferno story arc where it's revealed that Gene is not Gene, Gene's a clone of Gene, cloned by Mr. Sinister. And she becomes Madeline Pryor. And she becomes the Goblin Queen. This is what I wanted to get to. Because the Goblin Queen was the hottest chick in the X-Men now. Right, yeah. They did not uh, hold back on the sexiness see if I for her. See her. TC says Mr. Sinister is a self-made mutant. So is he, he was not born a mutant. He just modified himself into being a mutant. Yeah, that's what my understanding was that's as well. Cool. Even though I haven't read those comics. That's even more badass than ever. Yeah. But isn't that kind of like uh, wearing blackface? You know? Yeah, it's, like, he's culturally appropriated. Yeah, he's culturally appropriated. The mutants. The X gene. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but he was cool. Here's the thing I didn't like about the episode is it was one episode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I feel like if, the, if this was the 90s <laughs> series, this would have been a two-part episode because they revealed Mr. Sinister uh gene turns into goblin queen there's a fight between goblin queen and the x-men mm -hmm. and then real gene turns evil gene goblin queen back to i don't know like wakes her up be like you're not evil yeah. and then they fight mr sinister a little bit and then they do the whole i don't even remember that yeah it like wolverine like two or seconds. cyclops blasts them and he heals like goopy heals and what i'm getting at is it should have been a two-part thing because at the end of this episode now goblin queen is not evil she like walks away like david banner from the hulk you know series where it's all like sad walks away down the thing it's, not bruce, banner. it's bruce banner but it's david banner in the the old the show? show yeah uh, um I never watched it yeah me neither but I think it was should have been a two-parter episode. And now it's like, oh, we might not even see Goblin Queen or Mr. Sinister again. They also do the whole Nathan Nathan Summers thing being sent into the future with yeah, Bishop. They did. There was a lot going on. So in much in that, this episode. That scary part with the like mind manipulation where everything was, was cool. like a horror house. Mm -hmm. And they could have... And this is what I was complaining about when Yo. we were watching it. And I was saying that... Uh, it wasn't there wasn't enough tension right because it was kind of just like jump scene we're gonna go look at what's going on with this person and they got scared by some jump scene mm. and then another jump scene instead of like if you had a horror director and then you could like pace some stuff out it yeah. made the episode longer and they could have done it in two parts because you're right that it was too fast where they introduced the villain being goblin queen raise her up into being like i'm so much more powerful than everybody else and then immediately resolve the situation in the same episode yeah i mean it was fun oh there's this you want to talk about morph <laughs> i mean what about him i think he's gay i think morph's gay i'm pretty sure he's gay. and i'm not I'm not no cap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm I not capping right now. Okay. Morph used to be bussing and now he's all cap. Now he's cap. Now he's all caps. Do you mean like Morph is gay as in you don't like Morph? No. Like that's gay. Or you mean like he's a homosexual and he has a thing for Wolverine? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Shower with him. And then he wants to shower with them. <laughs> definitely. All right. So Morph was cool. Morph is cool. It's not kind of saying you illin, Phil. I'm not illin. I'm straight. You straight bussin'? Bussin', oh dude. All cap. Hashtag all caps. <laughs> People are confused about this bussin'. Yeah, it's the vernacular. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it's the vernacular of the, the present tree. So, yeah, Morph, back in the 90s, Morph and Wolverine were buddies, right? And he was all sad that Morph died and Scott uh, cut and run because X-Men don't cut and run, right? Mm-hmm. And so then he comes back as evil from Mr. Sinister, makes him evil. That was from the original series. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, Morph's gay. Uh-huh. He's got lollipop head. He's got lollipop mush head, yeah, like mashed uh, potato head. Mashed potato head, like Changeling in the in the in the comics. Uh, <laughs> uh, he has a new voice actor who's, uh, I assume, gay voice actor. Yeah. He might be non-binary yeah. voice actor. That's what they say. Better. But his voice is different. His voice is different, which is off-putting if you remember the original series. Mm-hmm. But there, he's actually making like gay innuendos mm-hmm. to Wolverine Pablo in the show. Mr. Sinister made him gay. Oh my God! <laughs> it's just like Jean Grey and <laughs> Iceman. It happened. I see. They sh- that okay? They should write that in. That would they should write that. In. And no, uh, you know why they wouldn't <laughs> write that in. <laughs> They couldn't write it in because it would go against the idea of, of it being a choice versus it not being a choice. Right. You know. But uh, yeah, Morphscape. But he does turn into we have a, a a random appearance from Spiral. Morph turns into Spiral. Who oh, with the multiple arms. The chick with the yeah. six arms and the samurai helmet. Yeah, I didn't know that was her name. Yeah, her name is Spiral. I think uh, did Liefeld design her? I remember he was in her run, but uh actually no, she's from Mojo World, right? <laughs> Al Comics is saying Morph's new head is a white gimp mask. <laughs> <laughs> but he also does turn into old morph face, old evil morph face, because he's all like right. depressed yeah, about he, Mr. Sinister. Yeah, he was illustrating a point yeah yeah yeah. he said he did say that he can mr sinister could make you lose all your free will Mm -hmm. and then he turned into uh evil morph morph with the the bags and the dark eyes yeah uh gambit they should have gave her this costume here which one this one yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like, yeah. Let me see. There was a shot. Yeah. This is the original. That's crazy. Let me pull this up. This is the original Goblin Queen. It's kind of a shite, <laughs> shite picture here, though. There you go. Hey, you guys could see that, right? Hands. Oh, there's a better one here. Here you go. That's Goblin Queen. But she was cool. She, didn't she have any goblins, though? You were like, where's the goblins? I didn't understand. She comes up with the name Goblin Queen. Uh-huh. There were no goblins. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, that kind of didn't make sense. And she was queen of nothing because she immediately took the throne as Goblin Queen and then abdicated the throne at the end of the episode. I want to know, and I'm reading Claremont's run right now. I'm like, uh, uh, issue 108. I want to know if they ever did a thing where Cable meets Goblin Queen and like tries to take him over and make him what Mr. Sinister wanted Cable to be. Mm-hmm. I think that would be cool. They'll probably do it now that I've said it on air. Yeah, probably. But they yeah, they, production. they should do a thing. I don't know if they did this already, but they should do a thing where like Mr. Sinister and Goblin Queen try to turn Cable evil into like the goblin king or something like that where all of this like techno virus turns goblin green king. that'd be cool anyone let me know if they did that and if not uh i'll write that there's so much it's goblin queen oh my god Man, there's so much of this happening here misuse of the wrong button goblin. <laughs> uh what was i gonna look up here um, I don't remember now. We're just looking at Goblin Queen. Oh, there was this. Yeah, so Sinister takes over the mansion and like everybody's fears come to light. Come to life. Uh-huh. There was this weird scene where Rogue and Gan- uh, Rogue and Magneto are forming into one globular entity. Remember that? Yeah, that's what happens if you touch Rogue for too long. She just completely absorbs. The you. hand fuses into you. Yeah. It's not unlike Danny DeVito when the fibers fused to his head and his hat shrunk. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I can't find a, a shot of it. Oh, here it, it is. is right, right there. I found a shot of it. 
Yeah, check this out. This is weird. That's what I'm talking about. This Whoa. show looks really good in still frames, but in motion, there's so many things that I could be snobby about. Yeah. Remember when they hold up Storm's outfit oh and it's God. like flexing and the the damage pattern from like the uh energy blast spalding yeah. or whatever the hell it's called the energy blast but like all the spalling blast from it uh, -huh. uh it doesn't move or like it moves but it doesn't move with the fabric and it doesn't change shape it's just like a sticker like a transparent right sticker. they had to keyframe it and they got like the assistant to it was, keyframe dude, it. it's like three frames of the episode they could have drawn three <laughs> frames of this spalling uh yeah Brent's stuff like that pisses me off because it doesn't take that much work to do that, to fix that. Especially now you're not even hand drawing these episodes anymore like you used to. You can't just draw five frames of animation to make something look good. Yeah, this is the meh, good enough. This is why I couldn't be art director on anything that's like... I'm enjoying it. Triple A. Like another thing that's annoying to me is, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, there was something reflected in Cyclops' visor. And it was mm. very clearly like something. And then they just shrunk it down and then that. put it in the visor with like uh, a masking around it. Instead of it being inherently part of that animation frame, you huh. know, where the lines and stuff would have been heavier. Yeah. I don't remember that. You look, mm. see, you look too close at these things, you know? Yeah, I have to uh, just have it on in the background and not watch it. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I wanted to show this art off, speaking of X-Men. This is a guy I've been following. He's been doing some pretty badass art um, pieces for X-Men. And <laughs> he actually got hired to do this piece for a poster for the Konami's arcade game, Uncanny X-Men. Is this a new Could finally show this? Well, it just uh, finally went out of copyright. He might as uh, he finally is able to show it off after 30 years. No, he just did it. This is uh, you got hired to do this. So this is the guy that's doing all those cool. I hope he doesn't have any nudity on here. It's all yeah, he's doing these. Oh, that's this guy. Yeah, this guy, which yeah, I've been following. I had a problem with this because oh, this, my God. the graphics on their shirts look like stickers. Look at this. This is cool, though. Instead of being drawn in the image, I actually was thinking of hitting this guy up to see if he does commissions. Um, and he just is like, "Oh, I just got this freaking X Men poster gig." That's cool. And what so are they badass. using this for? Are they just selling posters, or is this says for... I can finally show my first official license art for Marvel, and it's a poster for Konami's arcade game, The Uncanny X Men. Thanks to Sideshow Collectibles team for trusting my work. Isn't the Uncanny X Men like the Pride of X Men? That's the well, name it's of the not, series, right? No, because that's just called X Men. That's the our X Men arcade game. Well, the game is just called the X Men because right. it was retroactively corrected to so be like this the cartoon, for. even though it was based on the Pride of X Men pilot. Right. And episode. this is the Pride of X Men team, you know yeah and costumes so maybe so they say he says this for a sideshow so maybe sideshow is doing like a do diorama well they do poster runs also. yeah they do yeah that's true so maybe that's but usually they do it with statues you know i thought maybe there was going to be like one of those arcade one-up x-men cabinets right and then they were going to well, do that as like a pro did they already do that yeah they already did a one-up for, for x-men done a special six player mini one-up i wonder six players yeah. right with the two monitors been awesome yeah maybe this is just the poster for sideshow but it'd be cool i wonder if they're doing a diorama with all the uh characters here this freaking dazzler looks great yeah for dazzler being such a dumb character dazzler's i mean she's whatever, whatever but her character's hot x-men arcade was great yeah, that's right game is awesome talk about a token taker yeah, people were asking Man. if we're bringing the Dude. X Men Arcade to C two E two. No, <laughs> I'm gonna give you that gift of Bugs Bunny saying no. No, that one with the tongue. No, no. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. Um, X Men Goblin Queen's hot. Uh, this, this guys. If you guys have not backed this, you guys better get at it. So, 
the Adam Miller, we've had him on to talk about this campaign, and he's doing something special. You guys could vote for which trading card. There's one open spot on the uh, the Iron Age Icons trading cards list. You guys could vote. If you back the campaign in the updates, there's a poll, and I think he's doing it like tournament style, head-to-head <clears throat> characters, and you guys could vote. And look at all these characters. We got uh, Sims Blood Hunt, mm -hmm. Vincent there. So many characters that have asked to be in this. And you, the backer, uh, are going to decide who's going to be here. wants us to bring Castlevania to C2E2. Jesus Christ. The game's huge. Not the whip one. Probably oh, the original versus? Versus Castlevania. Yeah, I think he's being You're not snide. talking about the one with the whips. He's being the... snide. Yeah. I'm not doing that. So go if, if uh, someone in the chat could drop the link to the Fund My Comic for uh, Adam Miller's campaign, please do so. Let's get some eyes on that and definitely vote. And we got uh, a lot of fan favorites in here. Bear Zerker would be great. We got Shinobi Sasquatch, a bunch of a uh, bunch of awesome characters. So wanted to bring that mm -hmm. up. Shouts to Adam Miller as well. Bring Top Skater. Do we even have what is that? We don't have top skater. I don't think we have top skater. Oh, we have it, but it's not on the floor. We have a top skater. Are we even supposed to say that? No. What's the difference at this point? <laughs> we have afterburner. Yeah. We got like five afterburners. Yeah. And G lock. Two afterburners. Uh, the sit down motion one. And then two G locks. Actually, we might have three G locks. Duck hunts. There's no duck hunt. There's no duck hunt. Uh, yeah, and then our R360 cabinet, which is the giant rotating gyroscope one, it's uh Sega G Lock R360. Yeah, we should bring that one. They don't have the budget to do that. <laughs> uh, Shanny is the duck hunt, Burger Time, Burger Time is easy, it's yeah, that's wheels. super easy. I was at Burger Time too, which is kind of trash compared to the first. We have uh, Burger Time, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very. And Japanese. yeah, it's super weeby for some reason. They changed yeah. the art style. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a duck hunt. I don't think, I don't think there so. was an original release for a duck hunt. If there is, it's probably like just some custom home job. Yeah. Uh, all right. Did you see? You probably didn't see this brand, but I thought this was cool just to show off. This is Blood Realm. The creator of Blood Realm, which is a comic book, is making records. Mm -hmm. And it's seemingly in America, this, this guy looks like... Let's uh, lower that. Look, he puts like a little thing. Right, that's the puck. Plastic. Why not? That looks like plastic to me. Put in this giant 50-year-old machine, it looks like. And look at this trimmer. <laughs> it was flexible. Yeah, that, that's because it's probably hot right, or something. It's hot. I would have imagined that you would have wanted to do that when it's cooled down, so that you don't flex the disc. It's awesome. Have a, uh, a record that's that color with like white marbleization in yeah. it. Yeah, super cool. Awesome, and it has the label on it already. I thought that was pretty sick. So I wanted to show that off. So shout outs to uh, is it Geronimo? Who does Blood Hunt? I was going to say, you know what game that was kind of like Burger Time that had a Japanese-esque sequel that did it well is mm, Elevator, Elevator Action. Action. Yeah, Elevator Action 2 is really cool looking. Yeah. And it's very different from the first one. Yeah. You don't know what that is. Uh, Elevator Action 2, check that one out because it's kind of like that just blocky, pixely... Uh, burger time style art and then it just completely turns a corner and goes into like this anime style yes All right. but for the better it looks really cool i don't know if you saw this someone tagged me in this they might have tagged you in this as well this is actually an artist i followed for a while he tags me in anything but does this look familiar and ask has no. look at that does this look like uh helly to you no, this is Ross Rake Radk. Oh, it looked like Red. It said P R at the bottom. Um, 
Uh, I don't know where he's drawing like here. to me. I mean, it's just a witch. It looks like Heli. Like a sexy witch with from Magica. a giant jump truck. Yeah, look at that. Shiny, too. Look at that. Yeah, the shininess is really good. Yeah, that is uh, worthy dump truck. of a extra thick dump truck right there. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, just going through some art that I saw. Oh, we talked about this. General Piggy, our boy General Piggy, uh, showing us the not pit uh, toy. Pablo is saying that there oh my might have been a versus duck hunt. I could see that, I guess, but it wouldn't have used a gun because it would have been on like a play choice system with just the tiny little joystick then. I don't you know. You know, like versus Castlevania or something like yeah. that. It's just running on like a play choice type of hardware. I've never seen it. I feel like we would have it. Yeah, it would have been really lame because it would not have had a light gun then. All right, General Piggy, update on the Not Pit toy. It's now on Big Bad Toy Store, listed as Devil. Mm -hmm. Legally distinct. Legally distinct Devil. Similar yet legally distinct. You can get Red Devil or uh, Gray Devil uh, with a mask and, and chain. So... Stuff like this where it's very clearly a ripoff. <laughs> yeah. They should put the name as legally distinct devil or something <laughs> like that. It would be hilarious. So yeah, shout outs to Detective General Piggy for continuing this uh not pit story. There it is. And also Dale was tagged in this. I, I did ask him, he says he knows about it. Well, that's all I really know. He says he is aware. He's he is aware. All right, I'm gonna send the link to our buddy RJ. Hopefully he's ready. And uh we'll bring him on to talk about some awesome book bookage. The link is out there, people. Yeah, I wonder if Shelby Robertson did say he is going to buy one of these uh not pits. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, you put the mask on him, nobody will know. Yeah, this is good. Is this part of a contest? There should be a contest. Of what? Of doing this? And yeah. It looks the best. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this should be a new TikTok trend. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. They could send the photos directly to me. <laughs> I'll judge them. Oh, shout outs to Deer Man. Did you see this? Deer Man the Holy getting back into drawing. Awesome. Speaking of ass, there's some ass. And is this Jazz from Lost Peaches? Maybe. Jasmine, she's got the sunglasses yeah. over the tops, she's the feather. The she has the bandana around her neck. There we go. Loving it. Very well could be. Shout out to Deer Man. Everybody should follow Deer Man on YouTube and Twitter. Yeah. More awesome art. A dead ass. Yeah. Um... Twitch, Twitch's next idea. Yeah, people need to wear more rogue costumes. This is the Bring Back Rogue's Ass contest. <laughs> yeah. Well, there I, there has to be a petition. There should be a petition. For season two? Because they're working on season two, right? Yeah, I heard that they are uh, recording season two right now. <clears throat> which is good. Also, some more news. Nudes? No, no, no. Snarticon DM. Last week, we talked about Mutant X. And he went out and bought it off of Amazon, the box set DVDs, Mutant X. You guys could like watch. All Snarky does is just harass me on Twitter. Now. Yeah, he's constantly he's tagging done. you and things on Twitter. Right. But I appreciate it. I think it's funny. We got some Mutant X news. But this was also something that I guess we were confusing Mutant X with. This is uh no, I've never heard of I've this never heard ever. of this Generation X TV show based on the team from the comics. Well, there was apparently a TV movie. Although I do remember somebody was saying that the girl in red becomes jacked out of her mind. So you're saying, um, yeah. I remember something like that. Which girl? Very, this girl? very, very vaguely. This, the, the quality red. looks this looks like goosebumps quality dude it's a camcorder <laughs> this is what happened when they invented magnetic tape 
and then decided that that was the way to go for making everything. Ridiculous. Yeah, I've never seen that. It looks like that stupid show Ghost Writer. Yeah, or Erie, Indiana. I was that about quality. Ghost Writer uh, last week when we were doing the show. Horrible. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I never seen that one. All right, but without further ado, is Buff. B- buff. Yeah. <laughs> While you do this, I'm gonna go to that. All right, we're gonna bring our special guest in. I think uh, I don't know if we have an intro for him. Um, let me see if we have an intro. Uh, I don't think it's his birthday. Let's just say it's his birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, you guys are watching Bird Up. Hello. All right, let's bring down the screen. Let's see if this works, people. The, the Space Ghost Coast to Coast guest screen, which is kind of in front of my face, but we could do live on air movage. Can I? Eh. No, it's going to be. It's going to be all messed up now. Damn it. RJ, what is up? How are you brother? doing? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling great tonight. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, it's good to have you on. It, you have uh, done so much in the past year with all your business ventures, everything you're doing in comics now, you're shipping, and now you get to add a publisher to your, uh, to your belt. Tell me about that. Tell me about all the growth that Critical Blast has had. Well, my goodness. I mean, we've been... Publishing, and I, I, I'm showing you my good side here uh, because I've got stuff off the side. <laughs> We've been publishing for like four years. Yeah. I remember you, you were doing uh, uh, your own books, right? Yeah, we were doing our own books. But, you know, we've, we've, we've done other people's books here, um, both in, you know, graphic novel format like uh, Grayscale here and in, uh, you know, text stuff like, you know, The Mafia in Hollywood. Uh, cool. This is all pocketbook size stuff by the way you know the stuff that fits in your jean pocket definitely uh, this is more the five by eight stuff that is grayscale oh you get brandon is brandon's coming in here right now but show show that grayscale off well, I'm, I'm gonna do that i'm gonna do more than that i'm gonna show this grayscale off as five by eight Look at that. yeah but um whatever happened to grayscale off oh grayscale as a hardcover oh wow. damn awesome. so cool that is badass. Uh, I'm forever joined to Grayscale. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but Brandon designed the logo for Grayscale. I did. Years ago. That is a Brandon Diaz original logo. It's Super a beautiful cool. logo. It's a good looking book. I, I guess, you know, it's just, you know, they, they quit kind of doing it. And we reached out and said, why are you letting it lay fallow? You know, let's go through what, what happens when they go publish with us is, uh, you know, we have a creative team that comes in, cleans it up, packages the book together, makes it look good. And then we get, you know, approval of the creator says, you happy? They say, we're happy. We turn on the switch. And in, you know, three days, the book is on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, Powell's, uh, your aunt's favorite bookstore down the corner where she gets tea. It, it's in all of them. That's so cool. Yeah, I've heard you on other channels talking about that. Super awesome. It's something that we would love to do in the future. Definitely. You know, I think it's really important for indie creators to get their stuff in as many places as possible just to cast that wide net. So regular people that don't know about the indie sphere or crowdfunding in general, because you know, that's crowdfunding is is kind of a very uh niche and kind of modern thing for comics. Definitely. Uh, I would say. And, you know, you're, when, when you crowdfund, you have to handle fulfillment yourself or you go through someone like us. So, you know, not knocking crowdfunding, obviously, yeah. it's been very, very good to me business-wise. Definitely. Uh, us, you have to maintain too. inventory. Uh, whereas, you know, once once you publish with us uh, and, and you're being distributed, the inventory is managed by Amazon. It's am- managed by Walmart. And they take care of all the shipping. You just, I, I don't want to make it sound too simple, but you just collect checks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's pretty pretty cool. People are saying, "Wow, Brandon," uh, and you're gaining more respect with uh, with people. Look at that! I have slightly more respect for Brandon. Yeah, there was a time when I would do art. <laughs> yeah, there was a time where people would commission Brandon to do art, um, and then actually collect those that art from you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which has been uh, uh, weird in the past. But that's so cool! Awesome to see Graystale still out there and. If you guys, if people in the chat want to buy 
that book and other books from you, where could they go? Uh, I'll tell you what. If you go to criticalblast.com, mm-hmm. there's a bookstore tab right there. Everything we published is right there. That's a direct sale by uh, through that link. And if you do that, then these creators that are going through us will actually get a bigger royalty because oh, they're cool. not having to split it with Amazon or Walmart. Yeah, yeah. That's but, uh, if you forget that, just go to Amazon and look <clears throat> at the title you want. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so cool. I love all that stuff that you're doing. And and the first time I heard about you and the, the site Critical Blast is, you know, all of the, the articles you would do you used to do like top 10 lists as well. Uh, yeah. You, years ago. Um, and you also contacted me after Dale announced that I was going to be writing pit. You wanted to do like a little interview, which was one of the articles that went up for that, which was very cool and uh, very poignant now. Uh, very poignant, but, but that was so cool. Um, how did you get into doing that? And you know, uh, how's the oh. site still running with, are you still doing articles and stuff on there? We are still doing articles, uh, not so much comics related anymore because because of the other businesses. I mean, sure. I'm in a position now where if I review a comic and it's positive, well, RJ's just trying to court their business for shipping and publishing. <laughs> if I yeah. review it and it's negative, they're like, well, I'm never giving RJ my business for shipping or publishing. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's a it's a lose-lose situation for me. I'll review mainstream stuff. Like, you know, if there's a Marvel book out there or a DC book that just like moves me to write, I'll do that. Uh, but we still have music reviews go up. We still have movie reviews come up. Um, Damascus Minsmeyer is out there writing about horror novels and anthologies all the time. So we, we still keep that active. Um, Very cool. Awesome. We, we've been doing that for 10 years now. Yeah, that that's crazy. Uh, good on you for that. But now, now that you're uh, getting more people jumping on to working with you with the publishing side and fulfillment side of things, uh, this is what we're going to talk about, which is the perfect 10 number one deluxe hardcover artist edition now we just had dave on a couple months ago talking about his previous issue yeah look at that previous issue of perfect 10 how did this this one come about because he's already done a handful of issues and now we're getting some oversized art some black and white stuff i think there's some script in there so cool right now this is a prototype version it's only 80 pages the actual one's going to be 130 uh but you know we reached out to dave was like you know Again, what are you doing with issue number one stuff other than keeping back stock? And uh, we said we, we could do this sort of uh, oversized edition. This is eight and a half by 11. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to block my mic, but I think I am. Eight and a half by 11 right here. You can see it's got, we, we have the actual script up in this corner here. Uh, and then the, uh, the finished inks down here. It's hard That's to so do cool. this. But this is a, not, not a very representative page because... Um, Again, this was a prototype. This was done. Like I, I said, hey, Dave, you want to see something cool? He's like, how did you do that? I just sent you the script yesterday uh, <laughs> because it's not in there yet. Uh, yeah. There would be uh, pencils and then the finished inks down here. And then this page over here is the completed ink page with the full bleed. You can see the trim lines and everything. Yeah. All the lettering is removed. All the sound effects are removed. This is pure Pal Roderick's art right over here. Uh, and then... Once we're done with that, once you've gone through the entire issue one, then we give the full thing in black and white, again, full bleed with the lettering so you can read the story. Very now, cool. What's gone on since then is that Dave's like, why don't we just do it in color? So, <laughs> so now you'll get the black and white page, and then opposite here you'll get the full color page. Again, the full bleed of the full color page. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. get every every piece of art that was done on the thing. Um and then, of course, you know, it, it, it follows up with some black and white Ooh. line art drawing. It's, it's all going to be, yeah. oh, yeah. It's it's <laughs> all going to be um, Pal Roderick's art throughout. So, yeah. Hey, look at that piece. That was uh, a piece in CG Vacation. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. So good. This is so cool to see because we see so many people in the audience asking for black and white art or artist oh, edition yeah. stuff. For years now, you know, you have those core uh, art lovers out there. A lot of the times, too, uh, these creators, artists specifically want to see that stuff in black and white pencils and inks. And now uh, for you guys to be putting that out um, with a book that is, you know, uh, a series that has quite a few issues under its belt already. 
it's really cool and it's probably a great way to keep the ip flowing you know because yeah. these books take some time to create uh, definitely to draw and definitely to put together but having something that could uh, fill that lull maybe in a in a year but between books is a, a pretty smart thing uh, sure to do there. i think then you're going to get incidental purchases and then people seeing that you know that those projects are still in the works you know the what is it the third or fourth one's coming out now yeah. and the fourth one's being shipped right now uh, yeah, yeah the fourth one then and uh you know somebody picking up something like this you know liking what they're seeing then they're going to see that there's yeah there's a second there's a third there's a fourth uh you know those kind of backers or purchasers customers are, are going to be great yeah perfect 10 right now i mean it's i'm hearing so many great things about it you know we've been uh back in the books since i think number one and brandon was backing and you have a uh, very much a fan favorite in the chat so having something here to to fill that that void mm -hmm. and that downtime is awesome well, well let me tell you we've been talking with dave about what we're going to do beyond this yeah. Uh, again, the 130 page one is going to be it's it's funding right now on uh, fund my comic. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go to Kickstarter and Indiegogo or both. Um, but once the crowdfunding phase is done and this is like a forty five dollar book, you can get the eighty five dollar. if I've got the price remembered correctly. That's going to be have a signature plate on it by Pal Rodericks. Oh, wow. After the crowdfunder, this will go to the public, but it's going to go to the public at a much higher price point. Sure. So the crowdfunder yeah. people are going to get, you know, the discount deal. Plus, they're going to get whatever tchotchkes that Dave's going to throw onto you because you know there's going to be cards and stuff. Definitely. Um, yeah. You know, the book itself will probably be about 90 bucks on Amazon. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, get in it on it now. Uh, something super cool. I think you guys are really paving a way for doing things correctly you know brandon and i've really talked numerous times about like the next level of evolution of doing the crowdfunding and getting out there in the the main market you know uh bookstores comic shops stuff like that we see guys like adam lawson doing that um you know with with the, the exiled or, or what he's doing with it was other, other properties of crowdfunding first then putting the books out you know you see guys like um you know, they did that with the Keanu Reeves book, Berserk, Er, um, and I think Sean Gordon Murphy, some stuff like that. And really kind of using that crowdfunding to make these books and then get them out there um, in, to a, a wider audience. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you are the man delivering all these books as well. Look at that. Here it is. This is the Indiegogo version of The Exile. Just happened to have a copy sitting here. Sweet. Uh, th this is what's been keeping me up nights because there's a lot of them. There's a lot it's, of backers on that one. Yes. Yes, there were many, many backers to fulfill on this thing. Uh, and plus, cool. there's like a statue involved. So it's a whole new level of, you know, it's it's not, that that does not fit in a Gemini. Yeah, I saw how big those boxes are for those statues. That is e crazy. Even the oversized book doesn't fit in a Gemini. You can't crease that thing around it. There, there's no way. I, I had to go get larger media mailers. Uh, which are like two inches thick and they got the closed top. It's Mm -hmm. that that's that's crazy but it, it's awesome that you're you're getting so um so much work out of this too you know fulfilling stuff and you guys if i'm correct you guys have your own like office now and, and kind of center and stuff Growing, talk about that how, how has that been that that's that's been expensive <laughs> but, <laughs> sure but you know you you got to spend the money to uh grow a business you can't just you know operate out of the out of your bedroom all your life um you gotta expand yeah. it out so i'm actually moving um to a new location this weekend wow throughout all next month and it's just um the place has a garage that's not going to be a garage it's gonna you know we're gonna put a drop ceiling in it uh it's about the size of three storage units maybe four it's it's very very big downstairs we're gonna set that up with wireframe shelves we're gonna have racking installed um it's gonna be where the bulk of the business is and then i'll still keep um you know one of the warehouses one of the external warehouses because as nice as this place is going to be it's still up a very steep driveway and semis won't come and Ooh, mm -hmm. when i started this business i never foresaw you know i was like you know send send me cartons of comics ups pulls up hey got some cartons of comics yeah and and, and then drunk 3po arrived 
and then yeah. Mussolini arrived. And suddenly mm -hmm. I'm dealing with these things called pallets. Sure. Yeah. And, and they take forklifts. And I'm like, okay, I gotta pay, I gotta pay a guy to run a forklift to uh you know get these off the truck and put them in. I gotta pay for a place to put the pallets because they're not coming up my driveway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, it's awesome to see that growth though, man. Congratulations on, it is. on all of that. It is. It's, been, it's been fantastic fun. That is uh, super would, cool. And here is the page, guys. The link is in the description below. I, I saw some mods dropping it as well. Thank you so much. Um, you can get the hardcover here and uh, so much more. I saw there was some original art flying off the shelves. The CG Vacation piece actually sold, which is super cool. That was a, a fan favorite of ours, or, you know, but Brandon and mine both one of the probably the top pieces yeah, in that that's book. Probably my favorite piece in there. So cool. He'll, he'll do a head sketch for you. Um, oh, let's see that. Of, of any character you pick. So cool. Yeah. That is awesome. I, I love uh Dave's campaigns because you know this one, the uh character commissions where he'll do like perfect 10 and one of your characters or one of your favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Those are super cool to see on his previous campaigns. And uh, it seems like Pow and Dave are such a great team. It's awesome bringing these, these characters to life and so much uh, like cooperation between the two really making these campaigns unique uh, from the past. So guys head over there, grab your copy, spread the word as well. Uh, sharing this stuff out really, really helps out too. Um, should I play the trailer here? How's how's the, uh, yeah. the trailer on this? Let's see. There it is. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Wrong move. There we go. No, I keep. Where is he? There he is. God, failure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Is this StreamYards doing this? Are you guys going through some? Uh, yeah, well, we got StreamYards, and then OBS is our little screen there, and so I could like switch cameras and stuff nice. um, with my little Stream Deck. So it's a, it's a complicated operation. Uh, I should be uh, have That's a hang of it case. already. Yeah, so don't uh, don't sue me, uh, dude. The book looks awesome, and what you guys are doing over at Critical Blast is so cool. All the stuff you're achieving, people you're working with, really kind of like a a, a foundational pillar now to everything because you're helping so many creators out. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I know a lot of people in the chat, a lot of creators appreciate that too. And now this is so cool that you're getting things out even farther than what we're doing regularly in crowdfunding. Yeah, I mean, you know, if that. you, uh, if you crowdfunded a book folks, if you put one out there and now it's like done and you're like, well, what do I do with it now? Hit us up. You know, we can do things like, uh, the Incontesi here we did for Rich Parada. This is, you know, Incontesi books one and two, uh, out as a hardcover. And, so cool. it's, uh, you saw it with grayscale with when we put a book out we're going to put it out as a hardcover 
We're going to put it out as a five by eight. We're going to put it out as a pocketbook, all three of them, because you know what? It's going to cost you three times as much to do it as it does one and one costs you nothing. Yeah. So there, there, there's, there's the, the, the deal is on the back end. We make a deal with you on the profits uh, and, and believe me, you're getting the lion's share of it. Uh, as That's creator. so cool. So I've heard you talk about it bef before on other streams. Um, the Amazon stuff and is everything what you're doing, like print on demand to order? Like, even if like, say I go to my local comic shop or like a, a bookstore and I want to order one of these things, it's going, they're going to be ordering directly from a print Ingram. on demand site. Oh, In Ingram, it's called through Ingram. Ingram's been around for, for decades. Uh, in fact, if you, if you have a book and you, want to see it in a bookstore and you go in and say, Hey, will you guys carry my book? Guaranteed. The first question they're going to ask you is, is it in the Ingram catalog? Because every brick and mortar bookstore uses that uh, to, to bring in fulfillment to their stores. Now, some comic stores have Ingram accounts. Some don't. Uh, your Barnes and Noble definitely has Ingram's accounts, but if you wanted to get something at your local comic shop, you might want to go through us. If you're the creator. Uh, yeah. Here's here's the, here's the thing. If you're the creator, and you want copies of your books, you say, hey, RJ, I need 20 copies of my book. And I go into the system because, you know, I'm the publisher. It's my account. I'm like, okay, this is what they're charging you to print the book and ship it to you. You PayPal me that amount, and I PayPal it to them, and they ship it to you. And notice that no money ended up in my pocket in that entire transaction. Uh, you will always have the right to buy your own books at cost as long as you're uh, in the Critical Blast publishing house. That's so cool. Awesome. Yeah, that, that is that is really cool. Is uh, the, the Ingram handles the printing as well, or are they? Yes. Oh, awesome. And In, are they? Ingram has their own printer. Uh, they're they're a global printer. So you know, if you are in Australia and you're ordering, they're going to tell the printer the print system in Australia to print it out. If you're in the UK and you order it, they're going to tell the printer in the UK to print it out. So your shipping is always going to be local. Very cool. Uh, that, that's amazing. And obviously they, I assume they have printers in the U S as well. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's like stuff, stuff that we do is we always are it's like, since we've started publishing, all of our stuff has been printed in the U S. Right. Um, that's something that we really yeah, like, we like to have except for the business. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a U.S. company. They just yeah. have global facility. Sure. Cool. Sure. Awesome. When we break into that China market, you know, then that stuff could be printed <laughs> over in China for them. Cut down all that. Yeah, I don't think we have a big Chinese <laughs> fan base yet. Maybe one day we'll get it. Uh, Snarkticon says, give me that manga, Phil. It's coming. We have our little manga books. Um, let's, I had, there's some, oh, uh, backed. Jav Styler says backed. Guess um, 26 doesn't say. Yeah, I'm not sure how uh, numbers work. On yeah, Jav was comment. saying that uh, the international shipping is low enough for an impulse purchase. Really? Yeah, that's what he's saying. What was it, $12 or something or $15 or something? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what he said, but yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, what do you think about everybody, like all this shit? Because you ship so much, and I know that... I've heard you speak about, you know, you having pretty good shipping costs uh, where you're going through and how you're, how you're doing that. A lot of people complaining about international shipping. What's your take on that? And how do you kind of deal with that as an issue going forward? Well, you know, international shipping is what got us started in the first place. Yeah. Uh, this, this was um, The Company Men. Uh, was book out of Australia. Yes. Great looking book. $25 for the book. And it was like, and, and this is during COVID, of course. It was like sixty-five dollars to ship the thing, <laughs> yeah. Um, and nobody wanted it. Uh, I've, I've, and I'd seen higher prices for shipping at the time. So I told Lee, I was like, "Well, why don't you just put them in a great big box?" He was on my podcast, you know, when we were doing that stuff. Yeah. Why don't you just put them in one box and and ship them here, and then I'll distribute them in the U.S. for domestic prices. It'd be a lot cheaper. And he got mm -hmm. his ship cost down to like eight dollars a book. Yeah. Um, and he sold a lot more books as a result of that. So, you know, that's, that's like, that's great. And that second client called up and said, hey, you know, uh, what you did for him, can you do for me? I'm like, okay, sure. Where are you coming from? Virginia. Yeah. Like, Wait a second. I'm not saving you any money. In fact, I'm costing you money. He's like, you don't understand, RJ. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. we are here. And, you know, Critical Blast Fulfillment became a thing. 
Uh, yeah. But but international shipping for um, it, I do have discounted rates with the uh, shipper program that I go through, uh, and I can ship. Let's let's say um, let's say your standard book's eleven ounces. Your your, your twenty two page comics and go in a Gemini mailer. Guess what? The Gemini mailer has weight too. You got to take that into account. Um, so so eleven ounces. Uh, that's under a pound. So so with the Gemini, the packaging, we put an overwrap on everything so Geminis don't go out naked. They get cold, they get wet, they get sucked. Um, I, I can ship to Canada for $16.83 total. That includes my eating money. So yeah. that, that's, that's everything there. Uh, outside of Canada, like to the rest of the world, it's all one price, $20.83. So I can ship the comic to Australia for $20.83. Nice good price. Yeah. Everything, really everything good. included. Now that's an estimate. If you suddenly have like two books, uh, you know, it, it can go up nickel and dimes. Uh, you know, you got two comics. I'm going to put them each in their own sleeve and backer board. There's an extra quarter uh, for, for a pair of those things. Uh, and then as the weight goes up, of course, the price goes up. Uh, we cap off right under four pounds. As soon as we hit four pounds, we're at the mercy of UPS and everybody else. And then what I do, you know, if it's if it's a big package, uh, we've got things with the exiled. Okay, uh, exiled packages were coming in at like six and a half pounds because mm-hmm. of the statue in the books. Yeah, sure. You know what? I'll just take the statue, put it in its own box, put the books in their box, and now it's cheaper to ship two boxes. Yeah, yeah. Because I get under that four pound rate on both of them. Yeah, I mean that that's smart shipping, smart packaging. Um, yeah, that's stuff that I think everybody should think of and account for when they're when they're doing this and especially if it's the first time getting in into this uh, listen to the guys that have done it before and hit up rj um for all that stuff uh, you know i think that's awesome that all this information is out there and you're not someone that's kind of like holding it to your chest you know um i really appreciate I, that just giving the numbers out i mean you know when when i give that number out uh, i've got a breakdown and, and, and my invoices are the same way. Um, my invoices are like Excel invoices. They're detailed. The first thing you got is the pack list. Here's a list of everybody's name and what group they were in. Yeah. And the columns will be like, hey, Gemini, 80 cents. Bag and board, 25 cents. Uh, label, 3 cents. It, it gets picayune, but you know you got you to gotta take care of the pennies and then the dollars take care of themselves. Um, and everything on there, will you, you can tie it back to another tab. So, oh, look, here's materials. This is his material catalog. All my materials are at cost. If you can get a Gemini for less than 80 cents somewhere, go with God. Get them. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this is, this is you know, what it costs me to get the thing. I say, if I go to a U-Line and I'm like, hey, I need 14 by 10 by two boxes, and they ship them to me, I'm like, okay, after shipping and everything, what did it cost me? And divide it by 1,000 or whatever I ordered. That's the cost of that box, and that's what goes on the invoice. Um, nothing's getting rounded up. Nothing's getting padded. And, uh, sure. The, uh, the handling fee, $2.25. That's me. That's, you know, up right up front. That's good. Professional yeah. outfit. It's really, really awesome. So, guys, please check out his site. Uh, go check out the amazing hardcover Perfect 10 book. Super cool to see this, and uh, I can't wait to see – the other things you guys come up with um, for all the books that are in your catalog. If you guys want books now, uh, he has a bunch on the Critical Blast site. Uh, thank you. We did get an, another backer on the campaign during the stream. Share this around with all your buddies on social media. And uh, like we said at the start of the stream, we are shipping super soon. So update your uh, addresses on Indiegogo. If you did back the Lost Pages three, those books are going to be here probably like two weeks. I think they gave us an estimate of April twelfth, and that's when fulfillment starts for us. Um, share it out. Check all the links down below. And RJ, thank you for coming on and talking about this uh, awesome me. book. Everything you're doing, yeah, of course, guys. We're going to be sending you over to Michael Bancroft's stream. You know him. Uh, maybe you love him. He's a good guy. He's from down under. Uh, tell him we said hi. Give him a Zade raid in the chat. And have a great rest of your weekend. Start to uh, to a weekend, and hopefully it's starting out good. We'll uh, catch you guys Monday with another stream. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody. See ya.
Let's see, what are we going out with here? Uh, this one.